I have all afternoon to spend with my family and then I can still study in the evening or write a note or do my case study or work on my master's thesis project or study for the pants. It is beautiful. <laughs> What's up you guys, it's Adana. welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new, I do PA related content on YouTube. Take your time right now, go look at my channel, see if you like what you see, and if you do, go ahead and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you can know every single time that I put out a new video. So this video is going to be about how I manage my time. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about this, just how I manage my time in PA school, and you know how I manage my time as a mom and a wife, and things like that and I've kind of touched on it here and there but I don't think I've ever done a like a dedicated video to it and so that is exactly what I'm going to do in this video so with respect to managing my time um, in didactic year obviously it was a lot different because didactic year we were there in school literally eight hours a day and then it's it's a lot in didactic year because you are testing, you are um, having these quizzes all the time, uh, and so you're always studying because obviously you have to know the material. It's new stuff to you. So you have to learn the material um, because it's new to you. But in clinical year, it's a little bit different. So didactic year, like I said, we're in class from eight to five. Yes, eight to five every day um, on Fridays it was a little bit different yes we still had to get into class by 8 that was typically our clinical day like where we would go to the clinic and see patients so although we'll be there at 8 you know we'd go to the clinic at like 9 something we'd have like maybe like a little 30 minute break um, we would end the clinic at 12 if we were uh, in the morning as our clinic day and then we'd come back to school for one and then we would have problem-based learning where we're like in a room and we get this new pretend patient and we have to diagnose them and you know write up a note and all that stuff and that would last four hours so that we, we would be out of class again at five so although it's a little bit nicer in the things that we're doing we still have an eight to five day but it was every day from that we would i would go home and you know study depending on if it was monday through thursday because um friday typically it was like you know get ready for sabbath so like kind of wind everything down because they don't study or do anything school related any work from sunset friday to sunset saturday and that was my time off but with respect to that like it was just really super militant regimented when it came to didactic year my day started early i'd have to like get up get um get ready make sure that you know little my daughter was ready so that she can go to the bus stop for school thank god the bus came like literally right to our doorstep essentially for her to go to school um so that wasn't something that i had to be concerned about too much um and then i would go off to school and school would start anywhere from eight o'clock um i think there were some days where we started a little bit later on tuesdays depending on when my sim class was maybe i would start at like 9 15 or 9 30 uh, but typically it was like an eight hour eight to uh nine hour day apart from that i would come home i literally go like just get back into mom mode like cook clean whatever it is that i had to do um from the hours of five to like 7 30 because kids are in bed at 7 30. So that means that I get to study. And so I would study from literally 7.30 to maybe like 10.30. Uh, although like, you know, like, yeah, I, I keep talking about my kids, but I, yeah, I have a husband. And so um, he'd be there too. I would have him like, you know, we'd be in the same room or something. Like for me, it's just a matter of like being in close proximity together. So if I was upstairs and he was downstairs, no, I didn't like that. So I would go downstairs. Um, and if he's working on a project, like I'm there studying as well. And just as long as we're there, we can talk to each other. Um, um, I know he's there. I like, I like that. So that was like my didactic year. Clinical year, y'all. Oh, man, if you can just make it to clinical year, you are golden. Like it is, you are set, okay? Because it's like the light at the end of the tunnel. You know that like for the most part, you're going to like pass clinical year. Rarely do people like fail out of clinical year. They may like fail an, uh, an end of rotation exam or something like that. But then uh, typically, I guess there's like a remediation that's put in place. So for clinical year, likely you're going to be fine. You are going to fit in and you're gonna like be golden with come when it comes to clinical year. So just make it to clinical year and you will be okay. But in clinical year, like my year, my time is so much more 
my own. Now, don't get me wrong, there are hard aspects of clinical year because in clinical year, you you have to direct everything. You know, you don't have these teachers um, saying, hey, we got a test coming up in two weeks, you need to study, or you know, you don't have like that consistent, constant like grind that you had in uh, didactic year. So it's easy to kind of be like, oh, you know, I'm just on my clinical, I don't need to study for this test that's coming up um, in, you know, 10 months called the pants that is going to be, you know, really my actual like major test that I need to pass or, you know, I have time to study for that certification exam or, you know, let me go here and, you know, take a little nice vacation because I was only, I only had to work three days out of this week because I did three twelves, you know, so it's easy to get into that lull, you know, it's easy to get into that mode because again, like you don't have anybody there like pushing you constantly saying, hey, you gotta study, you gotta do this, but don't fall into that trap because you're just gonna shoot yourself in the foot and it's gonna be a negative on your part. So for me, in my clinical year, depending on the rotation I'm on, some rotations lent more time to this than others, but like for instance, you know, on my trauma rotation where I worked two 24s in the week, um, I would have a lot of time off, so I would go ahead and study. I would schedule myself to study. Like There were days that I put off for myself, like for my family, apart from Saturday, which I already automatically has built in um, because you know of my religion. I already have that that time off just for me and the fam. But um, you know, during the week, I may like put off a day because oh, I have to go, you know, get some more clinical sites, and so I would have to lock those down. So I would take that day to like go travel here and there to like try to see, hey, do you take PA students? If so, are you willing to take me? on your next rotation um, and if not you know then I move on to the next thing but I would also study 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 so like for all of the things that I'm doing I would study with respect to my EOR I would study for that and I'm going to have a, and I have a video on that I'm gonna have a video on that studying for my end of rotation exams just exactly how I go through that but I would study for my EOR I'd also just kind of review things or subjects that I felt like I needed a little bit more extra help in cardiology being like one of those you know, it's a huge portion of our certification exam. Um, and so it's important that we know cards. And so I would study that as well. And then also I continue on and just like looking at some of the materials for like my upcoming rotation, I would do that as well. So with respect to managing that time, obviously in my trauma rotation, I had more time to do that because I'd have five days off before like my next shift or maybe two days before my next shift and then I'd you know, have three days off. So it worked really, really well. On rotations where I'm doing like four tens, obviously I would study in the evening after I've gotten home. That's more so like didactic year, but again, it's still not the same because during the rotation as well, you have time to study like on your lunch break, I would study. You know, there are, there are times when um, I was inpatient and we didn't necessarily have any patients to see because we saw them already. I already did all of my rounds. And then it's just like waiting for, you know, a consult call to be called in from the ED. And so I have time to do other things. So I would do that as well. And, and I'm still doing that because I'm still on rotations. But literally, like what, depending on when I started my day, be it seven, eight, nine, you know, sometimes 10, um, I would either wake up, take the opportunity to wake up kind of late, you know, have my devotion and then get ready to go to work on my rotation and then, you know, go through that day. But then come home and spend time with the fam again. You always have to give that time to the family and study. So from didactic year to clinical year, the studying doesn't end, it's just how you study and how you structure that. It's not as regimented as it was in didactic year because I'm not like, oh, okay, I only have from 7.30 to 10.30 to study. No, I literally, like on my clinical year, um, I may be getting off at four. I love it, you guys. I love clinical years so much. I might be getting out at four or three o'clock in the afternoon. And so I have all afternoon to spend with my family and then I can still study in the evening or write a note or do my case study or work on my master's thesis project or study for the pants. It is beautiful. Um, so I love it, but that is how I manage my time 
very, very strategically. I always make sure that there is time for family, God, and studying. Um, those are really important to me. Not in that order, it's like God, family, studying. But um, that's I make sure that I manage my time well with respect to that. And I make sure that I am getting the information that I need because I wanna also know that I know the material because I know that for the most part, I'm gonna be tested on this. Because you're tested on every core rotation on my elective rotations, which we're, we get four of them. We don't get tested on those, except for like OSCEs, which are, you know, your preceptor is asking you like questions, they're pretending to be a patient and now you have to come and diagnose them. But um, other than that, it's like, it's pretty like, just kind of go with the flow. So that was, that's how I manage my time. I hope you guys, you know, learned something from this or you guys like the whole idea of clinical year a lot more because it is amazing. Um, but I am really excited to see what these next couple months hold. And again, pray for me, y'all, because I will be taking my pants in a few short months. I'm really, really, really nervous about it. But you know, I think that they are preparing as well. Anyways, if you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any video ideas that you want to see that I may not have addressed yet, go ahead and leave those as well. And follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA and go ahead and like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!